A little while ago, SparkFun released two boards based on the RISC-V architecture. This is the RED-5 RED board, and this is the RED-5 Thing Plus board. It can seem a little daunting to dive into programming RISC-V boards for the first time, but it's not that bad. The SparkFun boards are very similar to the hi 51 Rev B boards, so we can just use the examples that already exist. The RED-5 boards are built around the Sci-5 Freedom Everywhere FE310-G002 microcontroller, which uses a 32-bit RV32 IMAC core. This microcontroller implements the RISC-V instruction set architecture, which is completely open source. The boards can reportedly run at 150 megahertz and have 16 kilobytes of RAM. Because the FE310 doesn't have any flash storage, there's an onboard SPI flash chip that gives you 4 megabytes to store your programs. You'll also notice this NXP K22 controller on the board. This acts as a programmer and debugger for the E310. It can also be used as a USB to serial bridge. SparkFun created this great guide on how to install the development environments that we'll be looking at. I definitely recommend checking it out to see the steps needed to install the various programs and dependencies. They recommend two different ways of interacting with the RED5. The first is to use the Eclipse-based Freedom Studio IDE, and the other is to use the Zephyr project. I'll briefly talk about each of these. Let's start with Freedom Studio, which is the easiest to install. Head to the Sci-5 site, click on Products, and go to Boards and Software. Scroll down to the Freedom Studio section. Notice that Freedom Studio has releases for the three major operating systems. I'm going to stick with Linux for this demo, as it seems to work without installing extra drivers, and it's the only operating system that works with the Zephyr project right now. Start by plugging a USB-C cable into the RED5 board and plug the other end into your computer. Open a terminal and create a folder for Freedom Studio. I like to keep my work in a Projects folder in my home directory. Then, untar the downloaded Freedom Studio file to the Freedom Studio directory you just created. Navigate into that directory and run the Freedom Studio executable. Just like any good Eclipse clone, it'll ask you where you want to put your workspace. I'll leave mine as the default and launch the application. Close any pop-ups you might see and go to File, New, Freedom E SDK Software Project. The RED5 is very much like the hi 51 Rev B, so we select that as our target board. From there, it's a good idea to start with an example project. So let's select Hello, which just prints Hello World over Serial. Click Finish, and you should be presented with a debug configurations window. Just close out of this and don't save anything. You should then see the hello.c file, which contains our main function. I'm going to add a while forever loop around the print statement so that we don't have to reset the processor once we've started running. It'll be a little messy without a delay, but at least we'll know it's working. Save your code. Go into Run, Run Configurations. Click on our project under the Segger JLink debugging group. Make sure that you see a .elf file shown as the application, otherwise it doesn't seem to run. Click Run, and the IDE will flash your program to the RED5 board. On the bottom right side of Freedom, go into the Terminal tab and click the Connect button. Make sure you're using the serial terminal and select the device file or COM port for your RED5. The RED5 will enumerate two different serial ports. We usually want the second highest port number, as that corresponds to the print function in code. You should see a whole bunch of Hello World text flying across the terminal, which shows you that it's working. Now, let's try making a blinking LED example, and I'll show you how to do step-through debugging with Freedom Studio. Start another Freedom E SDK project. Select the hi 51 Rev B as the target board, keep Hello as the starter program, and change the name to something like Red 5 Blinky. Wait while it builds, and you should be presented with the configuration window again. Just close out of this, not saving any changes. If we go back to the SparkFun RED5 guide and scroll down to the Blink example, you'll see that the fine folks at SparkFun have provided us with a simple program that flashes the onboard LED. Let's copy it and paste it into hello.c, replacing the original code. You'll see that they imported the Metal GPIO library to control the pins, which acts as an abstraction layer to reading and writing registers. I'll adjust the indentation with tabs to make everything line up. You'll notice that SparkFun added a simple delay function to hang the processor so that we can blink the LED at an appropriate speed. Additionally, 
GPIO pin direction, setting, and clearing is all done with these metal GPIO function calls. We create a handle with git device and pass it the device index, which is zero for this chip from what I can tell. To find the pin number, we need to navigate to the schematic for the red 5, which can be found on the product page on SparkFun. I'm using the Thing Plus version, so let's open the schematic for it. We can see that the onboard LED is attached to the spy clock line, which we can trace to IO5. That's why we use 5 for the pin number in subsequent GPIO calls. Let's run this with step through debugging, so go to run and select debug configurations. Make sure we have the red 5 blink project selected and that we have the .elf file as our application. Click debug to flash the program to the board. When that's done, you should see that the program has started but paused on the first line under main. We can click the resume button and we should see the blue LED on the board begin toggling on and off about once per second. Back in Freedom Studio, we can halt execution by pressing the pause button. Scroll down in our code and double click just to the left of the text editor to add a breakpoint. Press resume again and the program will execute to that breakpoint. From there, we can use the single step buttons to execute one line of code at a time or jump into functions. You can double click the breakpoint line again to remove the breakpoint and then press resume to continue running normally. When you're done, press the stop button to tell Freedom Studio to close out of the GDB server. Note that your microcontroller will probably just reset and start running code normally after this. If you'd like to know more about programming on the Sci-5 chip, you can search for Sci-5 Metal underscore GPIO and find a link to their API reference guide. This site has all the information you need to use the Sci-5 hardware abstraction layer for interacting with their chips. In the GPIO section, we can find all of the reference calls that SparkFun used in their example. I hope this helps you get started with bare metal programming on the RED5, but I would like to show you one other way to interact with the RISC-V chip. The Zephyr project is a fairly new real-time operating system to the embedded scene, and as such, it's changing fairly rapidly. The idea is to provide something more than just an operating system kernel for microcontrollers. Zephyr wants to provide security, networking, and some device drivers to help you make IoT devices quickly and with portable code among microcontroller manufacturers. It's owned by the Linux Foundation with a development team and has a good number of corporate sponsors, which means it should have some staying power. If we look at this survey from the Eclipse Foundation from 2019, we can see that Zephyr has about a 3% share of non-Linux embedded operating systems. It's not a lot right now, but remember that Zephyr is only a few years old. Its closest competitor, in terms of features, is probably Embed OS. I hope to see Zephyr grow in the next few years, but it does seem pretty limited right now. At this time, the build system only works under Linux. However, it does have support for the Hi5 One boards, which means we should be able to get it working for the SparkFun Red 5. The SparkFun Red 5 guide has a great tutorial on installing the Zephyr project. Right now, there's no integrated development environment for it and no easy package that you just install. There's a good bit of effort in installing the toolchain and making sure that you've got the correct versions of various dependencies. I won't bore you with the installation steps in this video, but know that you can follow the steps here to get Zephyr set up for the Red 5. Once you have Zephyr installed, navigate to Zephyr Project, Zephyr, and go to the Samples directory. There are a number of examples you can try out here, but we want to go into Basic and make our own for the Red 5 board. Let's copy the Blinky project folder and rename it Blinky underscore Red 5. Go into that folder and into the source folder. Open main.c. You can see that creating a Blinky program is relatively simple in Zephyr. We tell it which board we want to use when we go to build the project. Right now, we're using a pin defined by the device tree that's some pin on the Hi5 One board. That's not the same pin connected to the LED on the Red 5 board. We need to change it to pin 5, just like in the Freedom Studio example. Save and exit. In a terminal, navigate to the Zephyr directory in Zephyr Project. West is a meta tool used by the Zephyr Project to help us do things like initialize projects, build, and flash programs. Let's call West build and tell it we want to build for the Hi5 One RevB board and point it to our Blinky Red5 project folder. Note that it will place the compiled binaries into the build folder found in the Zephyr directory. 
Once it's done, we just call West Flash to upload the program to the RED5 board. Wait a few seconds while that completes. When it's done, you should see the LED begin to flash. You might need to wait a few seconds after each reset, as the real-time operating system needs to boot up inside the microcontroller. If we search for Zephyr project documentation, we can see the official Zephyr docs on their site. Go into the API reference and peripherals. To get an understanding of how we're toggling the pin, go to GPIO. Here, you'll find all of the functions that the Zephyr project supports for GPIO control. RISC-V is still new, but it is an exciting development for microcontrollers and microprocessors. The RED-5 boards let us play around with one of the Sci-5's implementation of the RISC-V architecture. Good luck and happy hacking! <laughs>